I had the place stripped out um, at the same time as getting the designs and drawings done for planning permission. Um, there's a risk in doing that. Um, you know, you've got to have an idea, a pretty clear idea of what you're able to do with a building when you start stripping things out. Um, but I was on quite a tight time scale. I wanted to get this done really quickly. I, mean, I started doing the, the, the deconstruction work pretty much straight away and at the same time started engaging with the local architect to get the planning drawings done. So when I bought this, this didn't have um, residential status. It was a place of worship. So it wasn't just planning permission I had to go for, I had to go for change of use. I wasn't aware that you couldn't get traditional mortgage finance on a non-residential building. So that was the first step. In order to buy the building, you had to buy it with cash. So there was quite a struggle in terms of raising the finances for that. For a building like this, I would expect the council would have preferred um, a church building to go back into community use. Um, so if you are buying a church building that's got a decent amount of land that could effectively be used for the community, it's probably going to be difficult to get that change of use. I was quite lucky with this building in that there was very little parking and land associated with it, and the street's not brilliant for access. So there wasn't much chance of it being used as a, as a community centre. So the fact that this was a church, it wasn't listed, and it didn't have a cemetery probably helped me in terms of getting the planning permission through and, and the plans that I had for it. However, the fact that it wasn't listed, that brought its own problems with it. If you've got a building that you want to go for change of use and it's not listed, then you have got no choice but to comply with modern building regs. Now, if it was a listed building, you, could, you can sometimes get some concessions against that. So trying to work with a building that was never designed to be a home and trying to get everything designed and engineered so that it's compliant with building regs for thermal properties, also building regs for escape. Initially, when the designs came through, I was advised that I would have to have a sprinkler system and fire doors because the upstairs windows weren't um, escape window compliant. So I had to do quite a lot of work in engineering those windows and working with the building regs consultant that I'd employed to get them through. Um, and I think that's something that as a, as a self-builder, it's important not to just take the first answer that you get from an architect or from a building consultant. Generally, people try to take the easiest route. Often they'll try and, tr try and do things as simply and as quickly as possible, but it's, it's your project, it's your home. Then um, it's important to follow that vision and make sure that you put in as much effort as possible to try and, try and keep, to that, keep to that vision. And that means um, doing your own homework, doing your own research, and challenging anything that anybody tells you. And I find myself doing that a lot. <laughs> The change of use and the planning were, were sort of went hand in hand. I worked very closely with the architect to have the, the initial scheme, the initial plans for the building um, as I wanted them. Um, and I also took a lot of um, input from watching programmes and, and getting references from other similar projects. So taking advice like, for instance, um, not trying to change the external of the building too much, uh, not trying to slice through too many of the full height windows, that sort of thing. So in doing that, I believe that the plans that I initially put through were very sympathetic to the building. So I don't think there was any reason why the planning department would have objected and challenged it, in which case, and actually they didn't. The, I think the only query that really came back from the, from the planning department was regarding the, the, the amount of parking outside, um, which I managed to convince them there was just about enough for three cars. The local parish council were consulted as part of the planning process. Um, Neighbours had an opportunity like they would do with any planning application to um, object or, or um, offer comments. I didn't get any. There was no objections whatsoever to it. Speaking to a few of the neighbours since I've moved in and during the development work, uh, they've all said how pleased they are that this building was retained as a single residence. Another developer might have turned the building into um, two properties, a semi-detached, to try, try and carve it down the middle. Uh, that would have had more of an effect on the streets in terms of parking and traffic which the neighbours would have objected to. But because I was turning it to a single residence, that wasn't really an issue for them. Um, there's, there's quite a few people on the street that have lived here for a long time, and they've known the church, they've had children or family that have, um, or themselves have attended the church, uh, church services. Um, there was a Sunday school at the back. I recently had a neighbour's friend come round and look through the door and, and reminisce about them being at Sunday school here.